Hi friends, today what we're going to do is we are going to draw Pete the cat. Okay, so let's see the supplies that we need. We need crayons, we need markers, we need half a paper. I also have a scrap paper here. Um, this is to draw Pete the cat on. So if you don't have a scrap paper like this, you can use the other half of this paper. Okay. And then I have my whiteboard to practice draw. Okay. So before we get into this lesson, um, I would like to talk to you guys about something really important in art. So this is called um, space. Or there is another name we call it like depth how to make uh, show depth or space or distance in art so to show space depth or distance in art it is very difficult because we are doing uh, art on a piece of flat paper but there are certain tricks using which you can show uh, you can trick the person seeing your art into believing that the person is looking into a distance. Okay, so one trick is to overlap. Okay, guys, we have been overlapping things, right? So overlap. So how do we overlap? So to overlap, so suppose there is a ball. If I keep two balls next to each other, it doesn't look like you are looking into the distance. Instead, if I place a ball behind the first ball, maybe another ball like that, and it, it will look like there is depth in your picture. Another way you do this, show depth, is by placing this. It depends on, um, it is called the size. How do we do that? Things that are right in front of you. So right in front of you. So a paper, we can divide it in three, two, or three parts. The part that is right in front of you, that part is called the foreground. The part that is middle distance away from you, we call it the middle ground. And the part that is super far away from you, we call it the background. It's in the back, right? So things in the foreground, things that are right in front of you, the size of that thing would be big. The, the size of things that are in the middle ground would become smaller than that in the foreground. And size of the same thing, when you place it in the background, it would become even smaller. So we had been using these techniques in art in the previous projects and all, but we haven't put a name for that. And I didn't tell you why we were doing that. So now you know the reason why we had been doing those things, why we were overlapping, why we were placing certain things in the friend. We're making the things that are in the friend big and things in the middle ground smaller and in the background even smaller right so today we are going to use these two techniques to create uh, a project which will make the person taking a look at your art feel like the person is seeing into the distance so first what we need to do is we need to learn how to draw uh pete the cat or should we draw the background first? Maybe we'll draw the background first. So background, I'm going to take the paper. The background is super easy, okay? We are going to um, draw, put the paper in the uh, landscape style. Let me move this, because both are white, we need it for you to see. So uh, put it in the landscape style, style, and you're going to add a horizontal line. That is the horizon line. Horizon line is the place where the sky meets the land. So I'm going to draw a horizon line. So how, like, so I'm just leaving three finger space on top and then I drew the horizon line. 
now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw a line uh, from here towards here okay that is um, from the left side okay so we are going to put the Pete the cat on the sidewalk this is going to be the sidewalk so I'm going to draw a line from here to here so from here to this corner okay now what I'm going to do is this horizon this horizontal lines with this there right I'm going to make horizontal lines like that and then maybe one here so I made some horizontal lines on the to show the pavement okay so in the background now um, we can draw house uh, trees along the horizon line so what shape are we going we are just using simple shapes i'm going to use a triangle and another small triangle this is going to be the door and a square for the window maybe another window i'm going to make a triangle on top at that we have a house let's make another house the same way maybe this time I'm going to make a longer rectangle okay and I'm going to make a square on top that is for the chimney maybe some smoke coming out I'm going to make a window a door another window okay maybe I'll draw some bush on either side of this maybe here I'm going to draw a tree so two lines like that and something like this to make a tree you want to add a branch okay should we add one more uh, it's up to you if you want to add one more building in the back or you can add i'm just going to add make a y and a tree okay here now i'm going to add some clouds So we have all that done. Now what we need to do is we will color this thing before we start working on the on Pete the Cat. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, my markers and color the house. Whatever color you want to color. Red house. Maybe orange house pink roof purple roof i don't know whatever so i'm just going to color this green the bushes the trees now the trunk of the tree Go ahead, color the windows if you want, or just, oh, this is green. Let me color the windows, purple windows. And a pink house. Why not, right? Maybe this house is a orange and red house. You guys 
guys can color whatever color you want. This is pink, no red. You are the artist today. You can do, put whatever color, you can draw whatever type of house you want. All this is your choice. So now I'm going to put my markers away because I'm not going to use markers anymore uh, with this background. Maybe we'll use the markers for the Pete the Cat. I'm going to take my crayons and I'm going to color the sky. Sky again, if you want it to look like it is um, daytime, you can color it blue if you want it to make it look like the sun is setting maybe you can add some orange or pink to the sky maybe i will do add some orange or pink to the sky to make it look like the sun is setting or something it's up to you What color you want, okay? Mm. Now I'm going to color this. This may be green. It's like a big green area. be brown um, or gray or what color do you want the pavement to be I'm just going to make it a little I'm going to put a little bit of brown and then put a little bit of black on top to give it that cement color I've just put black lightly. That would have also worked. Okay, now this background is done. Okay, remember why we made the houses? I did I tell you why we made the houses small? I the reason why we made the houses small is because it is in the back, so whatever is in the back will look small, right. That's the reason the houses are really small. That's why the tree in the back is really small. Now, we are going to put a peat in the foreground. Peat is right in front of you. So when peat is right in front of you, what do you think the size of peat would be? Would he be small? Would he be medium size or would he be big? Because he's going to be right in front of you, he's going to be big. So let's draw Pete the cat. Um, I think we don't, we don't have to use the whole paper. So I'm just going to fold this. This is the other half of the paper. So I'm just going to fold this a little bit. Like it can fit in my whole hand. This much I'm going to tear away. And this part is where we are going to draw Pete the cat. Okay. So let's fold this paper in half. I just want you guys to find the middle of the paper. So fold the paper again. So you have a plus going through. On the plus, on this line, you're going to draw from here to here. Here you are leaving like a two finger space and here two finger space. You do draw a line like that and then you're going to draw another line, slightly curved line, okay, and then you're going to connect these two lines. Now, 
you're going to draw a U shape. So the U should be able to fit in two of your fingers. So I'm just putting like that, see? It should be about, not over here, okay? Just on top of this. So I'm just putting on top of where this line is, I'm putting a dot there and where this, I'm putting another dot. I'm going to make a U. Okay. I'm going to make a line like that where this U ends and then I'm going to make a V for the years. Let's draw the eyes, two curvy lines and then eyes like that, his eyes. Okay, whiskers, uh, we don't, we are not drawing right now because we will be cutting this out. So I'm going to draw a straight line and then connect it with the V for his nose. Now we want him to have his legs, right? So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to draw a line come down like that. Okay, and then Next, I'm going to leave, I don't want his legs to be teeny tiny, so I'm going to draw, so turn this around, I'm going to make a V. Can you see the V? Now I'm going to draw another line coming here. So these are the two front legs. And in the back, over here, I'm going to draw another leg coming down. Okay, so one, two, three, four legs. Let's add some shoes. So, like that, and like that. So we have the, we could have put the, the shoe facing this way also, it doesn't matter. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a tail like that. And I'm going to make a line like this. And then I'm going to go back. So we have feet. Now, So now let's cut this fellow out. Where's my scissors? So the cutting part is a bit tricky, but you need to cut with the lines. Okay, still there. So this Pete the cat that we drew is bigger than the houses that we drew. It's bigger than the tree that we drew. But all this is fine because we are going to place the cat right in the forehead, not in the background. If you put him in the background, then he will look like he is bigger than the house. Then that won't be right, right? Cats are not bigger than the houses. Or the tree. So, this we need to be a little bit careful. You can take your time to cut this as nicely as you can without much white showing. We could have drawn this on the paper itself. I mean, that would have been a better idea. But then, Next time, maybe I should have thought I should draw this right on the paper. 
I thought this would be easier. That's why I chose this method. Well, there's a lot to cut. But I know by now you are masters at cutting, right? So you would be fine. Okay, let's take a little bit more of cutting. Maybe if you need help, I think you don't need help without if you don't practice cutting how will you learn right how to cut so i'm going to put this here i'm going to take um the colors for the color to color pete so what color is pete pete is a blue cat right so let's take blue i'm going to put this crap paper on the bottom so that I'm going to color Pete. Things that are right in front of you are very colorful. You see the color very nicely, very clearly. So you don't want to use marker. No, you don't want to use crayons because Pete would be very bright if Pete is right in front of you. You could have colored it before cutting, actually. That would have been easier. Sometimes I forget all those little things. But still, I know you guys can manage this. I hope, you have, hope the peat is not too small for you to color in. Look at his legs. His shoes, what color? Should we color his shoes? Red, white, maybe white sneakers, red sneakers. Maybe. maybe. Should I put pink or black or I'm going to put it pink so you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to take the background now. I'm going to put him on the pavement and glue this fellow down. always tell you guys to put the glue on the bigger paper and I put the glue on the smaller paper and see. So now let's add some whiskers. And it's ready for the walk. So we are done with the project. I hope you guys had fun doing this Pete the Cat um, on a walk project with me. And I hope you guys learned how to show depth in your art, okay? I would like to see your finished work. So write your name, room number and grade and email me your finished work in the email address I'm going to put at the end of the video. So till we meet next time, bye-bye.